Well, good afternoon and welcome to the Idahoan Show. Now, many of you may remember this 9mm barrel that I made for the Utah pistol out of a piece of plumbing pipe. I really just wanted to see if the plumbing pipe would hold up in this application. And it held up just fine. You know, there's no damage to the pipe at all. However, the accuracy left something to be desired. You know, a good target rifle should be able to deliver less than one minute of angle, uh, you know, of spread between shots. Uh, a good handgun, as long as it's delivering less than 10 minutes of angle, that's probably sufficient accuracy for most practical purposes. This barrel was delivering more like 120 to 150 minutes of angle worth of bullet spread. Uh, and so, I think the problem was basically that the bore is kind of a loose fit to the bullet and so the bullets were not engaging the rifling very well and were not being properly stabilized. Uh, so what I think I'm going to do is actually ream out the bore to 40 caliber, re-rifle it, and then rechamber it for the 40 SMW cartridge. Uh, and that should give us a much better fit to the bore with a larger bullet, obviously. Of course, that in turn will probably increase the chamber pressure significantly, and the wall thickness of the pipe will be even less than it is now because we're going to ream off a little bit of the inside. So, if it doesn't blow up, I think this will give us better accuracy. Let's see what happens. Here's our completed iron pipe Utah barrel rechambered in 40 S and W. I'm honestly not sure why the rifling came out as rough as it did. But at any rate, now's the time to test it. So make your predictions. Is it going to work perfectly? Is it going to work but be just as inaccurate as it was in 9mm? Or is it going to self-destruct when we fire the thing?
Okay, now I moved the target down here to get out of the wind, so hopefully I'll be able to uh, discuss it without too much wind noise here. Now, again, I don't have any sights on this gun. I'm just using the top corner of the coupling nut as kind of a rail to sight along and get an approximate point of aim. Nevertheless, uh, my first three shots went up here in, I don't know, about a four inch group there at 10 yards. Uh, so I adjusted my point of aim and my next three shots went down here about the same size grouping, just on a different quadrant of the target. And then I adjusted again and maybe was getting used to the trigger pull or something, because uh, my last three shots were right there in the center of the target. I mean, that's probably a 10 minute of angle group, and that's shooting this gun without any sights. Moreover, if you'll notice, all of these are nice round holes. We don't have any keyholing going on, so uh, the tighter bore is engaging the bullet and spinning it like it's supposed to, and we're getting stable flight, you know, which contributes to substantially better accuracy. Well, that worked out better than I ever would have expected. You know, after the fact, I did some calculations just treating the barrel as a thick-walled pressure vessel and assuming some typical mechanical properties for mild steel. And I calculated that the bursting pressure should be about half of the industry standard pressure for 40 SMW. And the bulging pressure should be about a fifth of the industry standard pressure for 40 SMW. So either we lucked out and just got a particularly strong piece of pipe here by like a factor of five, or more likely the static pressure vessel analysis is just not an accurate method of analyzing something like a gun barrel that is subject to a highly dynamic uh, loading scenario. Nevertheless, I'd say this was a very informative test, and while I wouldn't necessarily recommend iron pipe as a good material to make gun barrels out of, I'm certainly pleased with how well this one ended up working. So, I think that concludes this experiment. Until next time, thank you for watching The Idaho Show.